The day is finally here that a lot of DC Comics fans, including myself, have been waiting for. Apparently, there's an all-hands meeting yesterday where they talk about the future of the company. Layoffs happened, and it turns out DC Comics is probably too broke to fix just to begin with, but it's certainly too unimportant to actually invest a lot of restructure into to really get to the heart of the problems within DC Comics and actually make them functioning once again. So it sounds like a whole lot of nothing is going to happen. We know that Warner Brothers Discovery, their finance office, you know, had a hard look at DC Comics and they were asking the hard questions. And at the end of the day, when it was time for the shooter drop, essentially nothing happened. And you've seen what's happened with Dot of DC and based the way DC Comics are publishing for the last, I don't know, five or six months, when you think maybe we would start to see some semblance of change within DC Comics and their plans and their strategies, nothing's changed and it sounds like nothing will be changing in the near future. DC has internally revealed new layoffs late Thursday afternoon as an all-hands meeting for employees turned out to be an apparent unveiling of a restructuring and reorganization of DC inside the larger Warner Brothers Discovery organization. It's unclear how extensive the layoffs are or to what degree any restructuring will be felt outside of the company, although some sources have implied that the answer in both cases may be minimally. Leading Cool is reporting that Allison Gill, Senior Vice President of Manufacturing and Operations, was one of the departing as of the restructuring, described as retiring. So that is the big move that's being made, the forced retiring, apparently, of Allison Gill, who does have 40 years of experience, I believe, within the comic book industry, but in charge of manufacturing and operations, uh, not exactly somebody that can make a lot of changes to the course of DC Comics and get the publisher back on track with their characters, which are very important. We know DC Comics characters are very, very important to David Zaslav and the leadership of Warner Brothers Discovery. In fact, he hasn't stopped talking about them since he took over as the CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery. We need to get the DC characters right. We need to get Superman right. So they went out there, they hired James Gunn, Peter Safran to take over the now DC Studios before it was just DC Films, I believe, and the DCEU. Now it's the DCU, and that's what the major focus is. And it should kind of be. You know, those are the most important projects that these characters are going to be involved in are going to be movies, animation, video games, comic books. The actual source materials for all these movies, animation, and video game just happens to take a back seat. And, you know, it kind of sucks when you're a fan of comic books. you got a comic book YouTube channel, and you know, you want to see DC Comics get back to greatness, but at the current trajectory and with the current leadership, you know that's essentially impossible. And it sounds like it's going to take more years and probably another acquisition of Warner Brothers. It sounds like that's probably going to happen in the next two or three years. And then maybe, maybe somebody will come in and actually care about comic books, but they're certainly not incentivized because of money, right? DC Comics doesn't lose money. But well, it doesn't make a whole lot of money either. If you whiff on a DC Comics project, what are you out? $60,000, $70,000? In the grand scheme of things, that's not a whole lot of money. Whereas if you mess up a movie or a video game or an animated project, you could perhaps be losing millions upon millions of dollars. So I can understand why DC Comics as a publisher isn't the priority, but they are also the source material of the characters and the stories that are being presented. There's a reason James Gunn went out and found some of the most influential and important DC comic stories to basically influence the DCU moving forward, other than, you know, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Which, does that have something to do with the fact that Tom King's mom, like, was a high-level exec at Warner Brothers for years? Like, it's got to be, right? No one can read that and go, oh, that's not, that's not true grit. That's an original Supergirl story. That's actually Kara zor That's the real character. Like, anybody that likes comic books and James Gunn acts like he does... Like, we'll be able to see right through that, but I don't know. It's just kind of weird how you have all these great stories that are going to influence the DCU and are going to be mined to, for the direction of these DC characters, at least in film and in television moving forward, and then Supergirl, Woman of the Morrow. It certainly wasn't original, and it wasn't actually Supergirl, but I don't know. That's a little diatribe, a little rant of my own. According to sources familiar with the situation, DC's editorial division has been left mostly untouched as part of the restructuring perhaps in recognition that DC editorial has remained relatively lean and reduced since the widespread layoffs the company underwent in 2020. That saw almost a third of the company cut at once. Since then, DC editorial has remained relatively stable with only organic attrition in the past three years. And that's how you know they really don't give a crap about DC comics and what they're actually putting out as far as comic book publishing. 
because that would be the place that you start with the restructuring. That's the place that actually needed to be fixed. Obviously, the first big change would have had to been Jim Lee find a new publisher because the publisher is the number one guy at DC Comics that actually knows how to lay out a plan and put out some stories and actually listen to the fans and deliver what they want. You know, Jim Lee's too busy being on the red carpet trying to be a Hollywood star or something. Even though certainly he does like comic books, he's been in the industry for quite some time, but probably even people within DC Comics would agree that Jim Lee waved the white flag a long time ago and just really doesn't give a crap. So unless you're going to change out Jim Lee and maybe bring in some group editors that know how to tell stories and plan things out and execute them, you know, and manage a team, nothing's going to change within DC Comics. You know, Allison Gill leaving, yeah, that's 40 years out the door, but two years ago, they had several hundred years of experience go out the door, and they're just as bad today as they were then. Nothing's really changed, and they shall continue going about business as DC Comics fans suffer through a lot of crap. Yes, there are some very high moments right now within DC Comics. Jeremy Adams Flash, absolutely excellent. Unfortunately, it's going to be ending very soon, and he's going over to Green Lantern, but I'm more of a Green Lantern fan, so I guess that's a win for me. Batman Superman World's Finest is pretty good. Hopefully, Batman can get back on track. Superman did have a very promising beginning with Josh Williamson, so we'll see what happens there, but there's way too much garbage in there. There's too much Megan Fitzmartin. There's too many Tim Sheridans. There's too many T. Franklins. There's too many Tinny Howards, too many Stephanie Phillips, and all these terrible writers, and now we got Christopher Cantwell coming over from Marvel Comics, and we got Jerry Duggan coming over from Marvel Comics, and all the failures over there are now infiltrating DC Comics once again. You know, that door was kicked wide open, I guess, by Brian Michael Bendis by design because that's what Dan Didio wanted to happen. But, you know, it's pretty much killed the creativity within DC Comics. It just looks like a really bland, lame-ass version of Marvel Comics now. They're not really delivering in mass the stories that DC Comics fans want to read. And it sounds like Joshua Williamson kind of gets that. He identified it. It sounds like some of the writers do, but they're not the editorial staff. They're not really in charge of anything unless they're writing an event and then they take half the the page rate of their co-writers and and they're the lead in the event or whatever it is. DC Comics doing some really weird stuff. And I don't know, they're just kind of a lost cause. I'm a big DC Comics fan. I love all the characters. And it's just depressing knowing that they're so unimportant. They're so broken that there's not even going to be an attempt to fix what Warner Brothers Discovery knows what's broken. But David Zaslav is a smart guy. It sounds like, you know, he got some major bonuses for making some smart moves and as far as the business goes, this probably is a smart boot. But as a DC Comics fan, you know, this is not what I wanted to hear. This isn't what anyone, for the most part, wanted to hear. DC was one of the final divisions inside Warner Brothers Discovery to face cuts across the past year. In the wake of the April 2022 merger between Warner Media and Discovery Incorporated, Warner Brothers Television Group laid off a number of staffers in October, with CNN and Turner Sports following suit a month later. A number of exiting and announced projects were put to rest at HBO Max amid layoffs at the streaming platform, including the much-discussed cancellation of the Batgirl movie as it neared completion. It was estimated by some that Warner Brothers Discovery spent somewhere in the region of $1 billion to find $3 billion in savings at the company. So they've invested quite a lot of money and resources into identifying where they could save money and what needed to be fixed. Hell, they went out there and canceled movie projects not just Batgirl there's a Scooby-Doo movie there's a couple other ones out there and they just said screw it we'll take a tax write-off that's pennies on the dollar rather than to put this crap out because we need to get this stuff right so David Zaslav and company were willing to go the extra mile and take some real heat you know in the short term to fix things long term so if there was a time to fix DC Comics the time would have been now they've decided DC Comics is too broke and not important enough to actually go and fix. I'm not surprised this has happened, but they know the sales aren't good, but I don't think they care if the sales are good. They want the box office receipts to be good. They want the subscriber numbers to be good. The viewership hour numbers to be good. They want the sales on the video games to be good. They want the license dollars when they go out there and they put a new Batman project on Amazon or whatever to be good. You know that That's what they're looking at. And the bottom line is, is Jim Lee is doing a bad job. He sucks at his job. He fucking checked out a long time ago and it's not going to get better until he leaves, but it's not worth it to them to show him the door and find somebody that's more competent and more willing to go out there and make good decisions for DC comics and their characters moving forward. We've seen now this has affected Disney and Marvel studios several years later. These are very similar initiatives that Marvel went through in the last 10 to 15 years. Unfortunately, the MCU is caught up to all new, all different Marvel. 
it's caught up to Marvel now. It's caught up to Marvel Legacy. And you have all these bad stories and bad characters being the linchpin of the MCU moving forward. And they're ruining the day that they didn't rein Marvel Comics in and say, hey, listen, we need better stories with the characters that actually matter. Warner Brothers Discovery and David Zaslav aren't going to have that issue because in three years, I believe the Warner Brothers part will be sold off. It'll be somebody else's problem. It sounds like that's been their plan for quite some time. And then they'll have to do it. And once you get through the 10 year plan of James Gunn, if we ever even get there, once that's over and they've gotten to more modern tellings of stories that are within continuity, they're going to be like, damn, we really made a mistake. We probably should have reined things in, brought in better creators. So we would have better stories to mine with the best superhero comic characters in the world, but that's not going to happen because Tom Taylor and Tom King and Megan Fitzmartin and Cy Spurrier and Jerry Duggan and all these shitty writers are going to be the new normal at DC Comics, just the same as the old normal for the past few years. So I think we're all waiting for this. It's depressing news. What's even more depressing is what DC Comics have said they're going to try to do to get a lot of you back. The last reader that still checks in on comic books and DC Comics because you care but no longer actually purchased the product. I went through it. I broke it all down. They made this presentation at Comics Pro 2023. Anybody actually competent at their job would come up with better ideas, which I do in this video. If you haven't seen this one, there's also a link in the video description.